Congratulations, Kentucky. You were officially the Dallas Cowboys of college basketball. Yet again, the Kentucky Wildcats, with all their talent, with Coach Calipari, who's supposed to be one of the best coaches in basketball, they're a higher seed in the tournament, and lose to a double-digit seed. This is not new. First of all, I want to say congratulations to the Oakland Golden Grizzlies for winning that game. Huge for their program. Credit where credit's due, but Kentucky, we must focus on you. The previous tournament upsets for the Wildcats were astonishing, but this one in 2024 is alarming, and it's finally time to come to realization that Kentucky basketball has fallen off. In this video, I'll briefly cover the rise of Kentucky basketball, and we'll also cover what went wrong. It's March Madness, and that means I don't sleep till May. Seriously, I've been going so hard pushing out content 24 hours a day. Feel free to check it out. If you enjoy this kind of content, make sure to like, subscribe, comment, share with your friends, do your whole thing, and let's get into it. This is how I'll preface the video. Kentucky should be held to a high standard. They have the best all-time winning percentage in college basketball, the most all-time victories, and eight national titles. Let's pick this up in 2007. Kentucky was on top of the world for college basketball. However, they were switching coaches from Tubby Smith, who went 263 and 83 with a 760 winning percentage with the Wildcats, to Billy Gillespie. And to put it short, from 2008 to 2009, Gillespie gave Kentucky two of the worst seasons that they had seen in a very long time. In 2008, they went 18 and 13 overall, 12 and 4 in the SEC, which is solid, and actually made the NCAA tournament as an 11 seed, but unfortunately, they got bounced out in the first round. The following year, they had a better overall record of 22 and 14, but a disappointing 8-8 eight and eight finish in the SEC conference booked them a visit to the NIT. They ended up losing in the quarterfinals. Two years is a very short leash for a head coach, especially considering that Billy Gillespie went 40 and 27, and for most teams, that's pretty good, but he got fired. He was out the door. Prior to the 2010 season is when Kentucky brought in coach John Calipari from Memphis, and this is where the program got to new heights. Everything seemed to fall in place sequentially for the Kentucky Wildcats under John Calipari. In 2010, they lost in the Elite Eight. Then 11, they lost in the Final Four. And then they finally came back in 2012, going 38-2, 16-0 in the SEC, and won their eighth national championship. Coach Cal was a master at recruiting the top talent from all around the country and hopefully developing them into NBA stars. Just from those years that I mentioned, he coached John Wall, DeMarcus Cousins, Eric Bledsoe, Brandon Knight, Anthony Davis, and more. The next most memorable year for the Wildcats was in the 2014 and 2015 season, and I'm sure we all have fond memories of this team. They were absolutely stacked with Devin Booker, Tyler Eulis, Carl Anthony Towns, Willie Cauley-Stein, Trey Lyles, and more. Coach Calipari was the poster boy for one and duns in college basketball. He embraced it and he perpetuated the nature of it happening. However, there were a lot of skeptics saying that you can't have a young team go all the way and win it all. Well, it seemed like Kentucky was about to prove all the doubters wrong as they started off the year 34-0 entering the NCAA tournament. Although the SEC competition was down that year, there was no doubt in anyone's mind that Kentucky was the best team in college basketball. They were the number one overall seed in the NCAA tournament, and pretty much everyone in their bracket picked them to win it all. They cruised through their division in the Elite Eight, eventually facing number three seeded Notre Dame, where they won a close one, 68 to 66. It was a huge scare. And then we all remember the final four where they ran into a Goliath, number one seeded Wisconsin, and lost to Frank the Tank Kamitsky, 71 to 64 the dream was over the perfect season gone unfortunately that would be the last time that kentucky ever reached the final four another great team they had that decade from 2016 to 2017 consisted of an insane dynamic duo of De'Aaron fox and malik monk they were a number two seed in the ncaa tournament and they lost in the elite eight to an amazing North Carolina team as a one seed who ended up winning the title that year. 2019 was another great year. They went 30-7, and seven, but again, their fate was the same, losing in the Elite Eight, and you guys get the point now. Kentucky is a great program, but after 2019 is where things really went downhill. 2020 was unfortunate for all schools. Kentucky went 25-6. and six. They were projected to be a number three seed, but of course, COVID happened. No one got to play, and that was a lost year. Their 2021 get-back year was not actually a get-back year because it was atrocious. It was Kentucky's worst season 
since 1988 to 89, and they had their worst winning percentage since the 1920s. They got off to a 1 in 6 start. They started off the season ranked 10 in the country, but after losing 6 non conference games, they fell from the rankings only to never return. So, what in the world happened with that 2021 Kentucky team who had the number one recruiting class in all of college basketball? Well, Kentucky fans are quick to say that Kenny Payne, the assistant head coach leaving to the New York Knicks, was a big factor. He had been at Kentucky for 11 years. I can see that. Others were saying the one and done era in college basketball for programs like Duke and Kentucky was dying. Either way you want to put it, things looked off from the jump for the 2021 Wildcats. 2022 was obviously a big year for Kentucky after they were coming off their worst season in a very long time and things were looking like they were going to be great. They went 28-6 in the regular season, 14-4 in SEC play, and they earned a two seed in the NCAA tournament. What could possibly go wrong? They lost to a 15 seeded St. Peter's. Now, I'm not going to go too hard on them. Because St. Peter's had an amazing run. They caught lightning in a bottle. They ended up making it to the Elite Eight. This wasn't that bad of a loss. Every coach is going to have their dud. We had seen it many times with Coach K at Duke, like him losing to Lehigh. So, we were going to let this one slide. 2023, they had a little bit of an older roster than they're used to, but they still had the number six overall ranked recruiting class. And this year was pivotal, pivotal to be successful in the tournament. Coach Calipari was losing his shine two bad years in a row for Kentucky to their standards. He needed to get this team back to the Elite Eight or maybe even the Final Four. They made the tournament as a sixth seed and they surprisingly won their round of 64 game against 11 seeded Providence by eight points. But then two days later, they ran up against a number three seeded Kansas State and got bounced out just a little bit better than 2022. But still, this was not going to get the job done, losing in the second round of the NCAA tournament after not reaching the Elite Eight in over five years. Here we are in 2024. The 2024 team actually had a good makeup. There were some veteran transfers like Antonio Reeves and Trey Mitchell. There were some great freshmen like Reed Shepard and Rob Dillingham who really got the highlight reel going. This team had a lot of ups and downs throughout the season. For example, they lost to UNC Wilmington during the non-conference in December. And then in the final game of the regular season, they beat number four Tennessee on the road. Now, the reason for this inconsistency was one factor, their defense. They could not play defense. They had the 219th ranked defense in all of college basketball. Yes, they had no problem scoring the ball. They actually scored over 100 points five times that season. It seemed like every game was in the 80s or 90s. They were fun to watch. They were sexy. They were awesome on highlights. However, that is not a great recipe heading into the NCAA tournament. When you have a defense that bad, you can run up into anyone on any given day in a tournament, in a non-conference game, doesn't matter who it is, and end up losing. That's exactly what we saw tonight against 14th seeded Oakland. It looked like they were playing scared late in the game, that they were nervous to make the mistake. Coach Calipari did not look like he was in control. It was horrible. It's 100% clear from this video that Kentucky basketball fell off. Now, the real question is, do you fire John Calipari? In my opinion, yes. He has way too much talent to be losing like this over and over again. This program hasn't been relevant in years. They have all the resources. They have all the prestige to be very good. They could go out and get any coach that they want. Seriously, Calipari is over the hill. He's had his good time. He's had his final four runs, his championship. It's time to go get someone new. It's just like that one girlfriend who's great at the beginning of the relationship in the honeymoon stage, and she's just not putting out anymore. And Kentucky, you need to go find someone new. That was the fall off of Kentucky basketball. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm not sleeping till May. We're locked in all March and April. Thank you guys for reaching the end of the video. I've been Saturday Shenanigans. If you enjoy this type of content, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, do whatever you got to do, and I'll see you guys soon.